everybody. Here we are. This is what we have. This is where we are at this point. Now, this video shot over a couple of nights, so we've had some progress jumps, and I've been cleaning up the shithole around us. Well, you guys know how I work by now. I just read an Instagram comic, so I just threw a picture of this up there from Palo, oh, also known as, I call him Super Spy, Eduardo. And uh, he goes, that is ambitious. Any of you who have followed along this channel for any amount of time, you got to understand that it's go big and break bones. That's what we do here. That's just how it is. But anyway, I'll take you through the rundown of what we have so far, if I don't trip and break more bones. So we have our base. We're going to get some support from up here down to these feet so we can get rid of that little bit of flex that we have in this webbing. That's normal. It's a 12-inch wide webbing. That's a big webbing for that piece of half inch to support all that weight without doing that. So we need to help that out with something. But I think I've got that figured out. I have a piece of inch and a quarter plate steel. You guys saw me cutting in the time lapse on the, uh, the power hacksaw. So this is going to be kind of like our anvil. And we're going to attach our, uh, our dies to this. It's welded on top of a two by two piece of square stock. Uh, square tubing. That was actually a suggestion from a couple of viewers. I appreciate the suggestions, guys. What's neat is a lot of you guys are fabricators and welders already by trade, so you kind of see things that I don't always see. So this is nice and square to here. Anything that's out of line with this, because these are grinder cuts, I'm going to take care of that when we make our slide. Now the rams hopefully will be here. I'm really hoping Tuesday, and then I can kind of get to finalize as we go up. I've primed the bottom portion, most of it, because it was driving me friggin' nuts to look at that uh, pitted rust, so I wire wheeled it off. I did not run the camera because I really don't feel like getting my lens all caked up with paint and stuff like that. So you guys get no painting footage. And of course the boy was out here learning how to weld tonight and I had him set up on the end of this thing, so I'm going to have to reprime part of the bottom, but that's not a big deal. He was trying uh, some 6013 and I tell you what, did pretty damn good. He, uh, he did real well striking, just teaching him how to strike an arc. And it's hard because I only have the one welding helmet and trying to teach somebody when you can't actually watch and see what they're doing is a real pain in the ass, but that's all right. It works out. So what we have left for tonight, we're going to get this guy welded on right here. And then we're going to go. We're going to go from there and see what develops. So stay tuned. I hope you've enjoyed it so far, and I'll catch you on the other side of it. There's the moment you guys have all been waiting for to watch this thing come down on my head while I'm trying to move it. And that would really suck because I know everybody in my house is asleep tonight right now. Here what we have. Now I'm not jacking, I'm only jacking this thing up about a half an inch off the floor. That way, if it does tip a little bit, it's going to hit those legs before it comes over, we hope. But, obviously, I've moved it a couple times. Just go slow and easy. This pallet jack is one of the handiest things in my shop. You guys remember, a little too fast. If you guys remember, we use this thing to move a lot of the timbers, the heavy timbers throughout this build. And um, just very handy. All right, so how I did this the last time, I got the very edge of the pallet jack under this to start tipping it back. It's real slow and easy. The good thing here is if it does go over, it's going to go over the other way, and I could drop the uh, I could drop the chain hoist down, 
pick it up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to stand to one side of this thing. That way if it does decide to take a ride, I'm a little protected here. This really isn't different than moving the big timbers when we were moving them. Because, uh, I mean, you pretty much just learn to let the weight of this stuff do the work for you. But I can tell you this. She is not light. There, make sure we're not rocking. You gotta watch saw horses like that when you're doing that because sometimes that thing tips over. This is going to the ground. As long as I'm not under it, it's all good. So let's see if we can get this part welded on and then we have to flip it over and do the other side. Well, I spared you guys all the uh, all the welding, so I know that screws the camera, and I don't have a proper filter for the camera lens for welding. Should invest in one sometime, but I honestly never plan to do as much welding as I do. I just do enough to get by, get the projects done I need. But uh, let's stand this up. So the back side's all welded now. We're all good there. This is welded solid. Now strength depends on how many pounds of welding rod you use to put something together. This some bitch is never going to break. Oh, let's see here. That's the best way. She don't get any lighter, that's for sure. But this is the part I hate letting it flop down. I just don't have enough ass to me to keep it from going, but oh, I gotta repaint the front. That's all right though. Figured I'd have to. I had a couple spots I didn't like. Definitely have some cleanup to do with the grinder, things like that. So let me show you guys a close up of what we have on the front side. The back side that's about the same, but the metal's not cleaned up and painted yet. I just ground where I needed to, to weld. All right, so I did this one a little different. These welds right in here, that's all 7018 AC. Of course, I had a little gap there. I've got to touch that up, get it nice. This is 6013. This is 6013. There's two passes on this. We did a root pass and then I did a cap on it. And um, actually, I did the root pass with 7018. I did it backwards. Usually, well, not that I know or in, in, in authority, if I could speak English. But generally, I guess you'd use like a 6013 or something like that, or a 6010 as your root pass. Then you'd cap it with a 7018. But for some reason, I don't know why I didn't like the way the 7018 was penetrating on this. So I, I didn't chamfer the edge like you normally would. This just has to, how do I say it? This is going to have weight just pushing against it. It shouldn't have too much movement, but there's enough weld on here 
this thing should last. That shouldn't break off. So like I said, this is a piece of inch and a quarter plate steel. Two by two square stock quarter inch wall. Of course we have our I-beam. Um, I think once I get the gussets on there to keep, to keep that from happening, I think we're going to be in really good shape. I tell you what folks, this is so far is a very fun project for me. Now I kind of thought that we were done doing the heavy lifting and the, the big, big stuff when we were done setting the last of the major timbers on this barn, but um, I tell you what, it's the only thing that makes my body feel good is, and I know it's goofy, but I tell you what, if I stop moving, if I sit down too long, I have trouble walking, stuff like that, you know, all that leg. But if I can keep doing stuff like this, <clears throat> I tell you what, what a difference it makes for me. Just, uh, yeah, movement heals, you know what I mean? But anyway, so this is where we're at. Pretty quick, hopefully we'll have hydraulics. Now we're going to start to fab up the C section of this, the, uh, the C frame portion, which is going to be an open-ended station on the forge press. So like I said, we're going to have our 37 ton middle and I think 14 to 16 ton on the outside, which we'll be able to move around it, do anything we want. We're going to be a little more limited for what we can do in here, but I already, I plan for that. This is going to be for the heavy duty squishing and this will be more for the fine work. Now, from what I've been seeing, I think they're uh, coal iron forge, I believe they make the C frame machines. Their 16 pre ton presses do from what I'm looking at, do anything a person could want to do with them. I mean, they punch axe eyes and hammer eyes and stuff like that. I'm kind of going overkill with 37 tons in the middle, but I figure I'd rather have a little too much than too little. And I'm not planning on shearing steel. I see people doing that with the 50 ton presses is shear hot steel and it does a nice job depending on the dies. So, but anyway, on this portion, we still have to make some die holders because we're going to want to make dies that we can take on and off. I really don't plan on pressing directly against this. This is just mild steel. This is just put here for beefiness and things like that. The actual dies, when I can get it together, will be probably 4140, something like that. That seems to be the standard practice. I see some other stuff out there, but for what I'm doing, it'll probably be 4140. So with these presses, any shape you want to do, anything special like that, you actually have to make the dies to do that. It's not like where you're beating on the anvil where you can move everything around, you can shape different things. Anything you make here is going to depend on those dies. Now we'll make a fullering die, a flattening die, things like that, but then we're going to have a lot of specialty stuff that we're going to need to make just to make the tools that we're, we're building. But uh, anyway, in the comments, there's been some phenomenal advice. I've, I've, like I said earlier, this was actually a suggestion doing that. Excellent idea. Keep them coming, guys. It is a big help. Um, just a lot of ideas on what we can do to make this a little more stable to move. As of right now, it's not so top heavy. There's a lot of steel in the base of this thing, a whole lot of steel. And uh, by the time we get our hydraulic reservoir and stuff like that on the back, now I'm thinking I may end up doing a gas-powered system for this, have it remote outside, and maybe a little door at the end of the forge so I don't have to walk all the way around the barn every time I want to start and use it. But I'm thinking that might save a lot of noise inside because these things are loud as hell. They're very loud. Now in the wintertime, we're probably going to have to put some kind of a tank heater on it. But uh, we'll see. I, this thing is going to get some heavy use in here. I mean, if we're going to be cranking out tools, if you guys are wondering why we haven't been putting the tools out yet, we're waiting on things like this for me to build. So, because I know once it gets going, it's going to be busy. And I want to be able to keep up as much as I can. Things like this are really what's going to kind of get me into production mode. That's why we're doing this the way we're doing it. But, uh, now you, you think of it like this, when I'm forging out a draw knife, it takes me an evening to forge it out from a rough stock. And that's grinding it, that's forging it. I mean, that's cutting it, I should say. Of course, I was cutting it with a grinder. We don't need to do that anymore, that saw, that, that power hacksaw is phenomenal. But um, 
So it takes me an entire evening to forge out one draw knife. And it doesn't seem to matter what size it is, it just takes an entire evening after work for me to do it. That doesn't count grinding time and things like that. Something like this, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we could do 10 or 12 blanks a night for draw knives and then spend a night just grinding and then a couple of nights of finish work, things like that. But uh, anyway, enough of my yak and rambling, all that good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm having a great time on this build. Uh, we're trying to be as safe as we can. I know it doesn't look it when you guys watch, but believe me, my head's on a swivel. One nasty accident in this building was enough for me to make me a little more careful, regardless of what people think when you watch the videos. So anyway, have a good night, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.